The City, Our Final Frontier. These are the adventures of the Rimba Project. Our mission? To explore strange new worlds. To seek out life in places we pass by every day. To boldly go where people seldom go. To discover nature in the city. We begin our journey at the University of Malaya's Museum of Zoology, where we will meet bat researcher VC Lim to learn more about bats. Bats are the only mammals that can fly. Although they fly, they are not bats, they are not birds. They are warm-blooded mammals that give birth, just like dogs, cows, cats, you and me. Some bats are hairy, some are naked, but they are definitely not feathery. Are bats really blind? Contrary to the famous idiom, as blind as a bat, which means having a very bad eyesight, bats are not blind. Although they are colorblind, they can see very well in the dark. How many kinds of bats are there? Generally, there are three types of bats which you can find in the city. First is the fruit bat, which feeds on the fruits such as the bananas, figs, and chikus. Second is the nectarious bats, which feed on nectar from the blooming flowers of fruit trees such as the durian and patai. Third, it's the insectivorous bats which feeds on insects such as the cockroaches and also mosquitoes. Our search for bats in the city brings us to UM's bungalows along Jalan Ilmu and Lorong University, an enclave of greenery situated in between the university to the east and Petaling Jaya's section 12 to the west. It may come as a surprise to some to learn that there are bats in the city. We asked some of our field volunteers if they had ever encountered any. Yeah, I know. Because at, at my house also has a bat. Oh, yes, yes. Like in bunch of caves. Yeah. No, this is my first time. Mist nets are used to capture bats. Stands for the nets are placed firmly in the ground. The nets are then carefully unfolded and untangled. They are set up in large clearings between trees or buildings, a lightning path or highway taken by the bats. These nets are attached to two stands, one on each end. The stands are then raised to extend and open the nets, which will be all but invisible when darkness falls. Now we wait for day to turn into night. While we have our dinner, the bats prepare to come out for theirs. It is raining when the team returns. They found a bat. This is Sinopterus brachiotis sunda, a common urban species also known as the lesser short-nosed fruit bat. Removing it from the mist net is a delicate task, and the membranous wings have to be carefully untangled. The head is the last to be released, and the bat is free. Important measurements such as head and body length, weight, and even ear height are taken. The bat's feet are marked with nail polish so it can be easily identified if recaptured. The bat is then released back into the wild. What did the volunteers think of their first bat encounter? I feel excited because I can look at the bat closely. I never did like that before. Yay! <laughs> that was my first um, yeah, caught, so I was like, very excited. Um, exciting is like, because it's dark, and then like you need to like shine, and then like once you find a, I mean like once you find a bat, and you're, like, you're so excited. Uh, first, I didn't know that how bat looked like, and and how we will have to catch it because I thought maybe we will have to use some small nets or this thing but when I found it, then I thought oh, it's very, what you can say, easy or it's not that much difficult to get the bats and I feel very happy working with the bats. How are bats important to the city, you may ask? Well, take the cave nectar bat which typically lives in and around places like the Batu Caves. 
This bat may have travelled nearly 20 kilometers to the university. Nectar-eating bats help to pollinate flowers, and these enable fruits to form. Fruit-eating bats feed on fleshy fruit like bananas and ketapang and help disperse seeds, keeping the city green. Insect-eating bats help to control insect populations, including well-known pests like mosquitoes. How else can we help to protect bat populations in the city? First, let's consider how we should handle bat encounters. If you have a bat flying into your house, leave your windows wide open so that it can find its way out. If you happen to see some bats roosting in your house or gardens, leave them alone. If you find an injured bat or know someone is hunting or selling bats, contact the wildlife department immediately. Most importantly, there must be suitable roosting sites to act as habitats for bats. These can range from homes or buildings, to roof overhangs, and even the dried fronds of palm trees. There is so much more to learn and discover about our urban bats. We asked our volunteers if they would do it again, given the opportunity. Absolutely, yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Sure, yes, I will sure do it. It's very exciting. Bats are sensitive creatures, and their future is, in many ways, in our hands. Let's make our city a beautiful home for us and for its remarkable animals.